All right, this one's for Baker. I don't think that's it. Oh, he's right there. Oh, it's smaller than I thought. Huh. It looks huge online. There's our boy. John Baker Saunders Jr. September 23rd, 1954. January 15th, 1999. The second member of Mad Season. This one's kind of tough. I'm a big Baker fan. They say he used to come hang out down here and own a small home nearby and just shoot the breeze down at the cemetery. Kind of ironic, he got buried here and lived in the surrounding neighborhood. Oh, well, he's right up front, huh? I thought it would have been like back there. You got the base cleft note, I believe you call it there. And we made it, Baker. You know, it's not that Baker wasn't underrated. He was a phenomenal bass player. For some reason, he gets overlooked. Not today. What a cemetery, huh? Just stroll around for a minute. Left a rock. Interesting. John Baker. Baker's memorial service was right down the road. One of them. At St. Joseph Escapel Church. Which is interesting because he sang in an Escapel Church with his brother as a kid. You see that hummingbird? Baker dropped his girlfriend off at the airport, pawned some guitars, and he died that same night. He was partying with a younger dude that most likely brought the, the substances to his house. He was supposed to be clean. Very similar to Andrew Wood, Kristen Pfaff, 
John Baker, amongst many others, right? I know I enjoy the hell out of the music. This is an epitaph, cenotaph. Baker's ashes are not inside of it. Uh, from my research, Baker's ashes are either somewhere on this property with family or in the Puget Sound. I really dug deep on uh, the Baker info here. Which is pretty hard to find. There's not a lot a lot about Baker online. McCready friended him in rehab. Brought him to Seattle. McCready even bought Baker a couple instruments when he uh, came to Seattle. McCready had that power of the Pearl Jam success. I mean, I think he, he didn't buy him one guitar, he bought him a couple. Supposedly, McCready got a bass guitar back that Jeff Ament loaned to Baker back then, too. Pretty interesting. Baker's jazz bass is out there somewhere. Somebody bought it, I think, in 2022. Good old Baker. You know, Mad Season went gold. Uh, big success, right? And then Lane dipped out. Lanigan dipped out. And they kept making... They kept making songs, but they didn't have anybody to sing them. And that was kind of the beginning of Baker's possible depression and relapse, really. Uh, his girlfriend didn't live in the United States, and so she flew out. And he already had the guitars in the car when he went and pawned them and dropped her off, so... And so with Mad Season dwindling, he became a member of the Walkabouts, Seattle. Seattle band. He even went to UK and toured. I'll show you the footage. He didn't look too happy in that band. I don't really I don't really know why, but obviously it wasn't mad season, I think. And then supposedly he was released from the walkabouts. And they even said he got a advance check for the next Mad Season album and then they made him pay it back out of royalties. It's kind of messed up. So all those things combined, you're not going to be in the best state of mind, I think, regardless being really successful with Mad Season and then dwindling down Baker even figured out how to eBay a few things. So he uh, became an eBayer after Mad Season and the walkabouts. Somewhere around here. I think Eddie Vedder gave him a bunch of Pearl Jam singles and Baker said if you list them all at once, they're not, they don't sell as well or for as much. And so he figured out to list one at a time from Mad Season to eBay. Well, I got an Uber out of here. To the next stop. 
Some mourners visiting. Well, short and sweet, I gotta roll. I'll come see you again, buddy. Rest in peace, Baker.